Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi and good morning to everyone. How are you guys? Is everything okay? Morning, Doctor. Morning, Doctor. Okay, Doctor. Okay, um, we just wait five minutes for all of your friends to join in. Are you guys a first year or second year students? Second year. Yeah, second, second year. Second year. Have you all been to the campus yet? Like first year student ever been to the campus? Yes. Yes, yes doctor. We mean that you have a little bit of the campus life. That's good. There's a memory. Okay. Uh, just wait five minutes for all your friends to join in. Okay, Assalamualaikum and good morning to everyone again uh, for those joining. So this is the first lecture of WIA 2004 operating systems. Uh, okay, my name is Saida Razali. Uh, is anyone having problem? Uh, with the code I given, it's supposedly that if you have the code, you can join automatically without me approving it first. 
Right. So again, uh, I want to introduce myself. My name is Saeed Razali. Um, I'm a senior lecturer in the Department of Computer System and Technology. So this is the one operating system is one of the core faculty courses, meaning that all of you have to take is a compulsory subject for all the faculty students, regardless whether you are a network student, software, AI, information system or multimedia. There, are, there will be two lectures that will be uh, conducting the classes, me and Puan Fazida, and other lectures that will conducting a tutorial uh, lab, tutorial and lab, uh, will, which will be starting next week. Overall, we have around almost 300 students, but I haven't had the figure yet uh, from Puan Fazida. And again, this lecture will be recorded and I will upload in the YouTube. Okay. Okay, good morning, everyone. Yeah. So I think, uh, okay, this uh, lecture will be recorded and I will post it on the spectrum and I also will post it on the YouTube as well. Um, if, if I have time, I will try to bring because a uh, lecture you normally takes more than one hour, one to two hours. I will try to bring if I have some time because video editing is quite tiring. Um, I, uh, normally my practice, I just give wh whatever rec whatever recorded in the lecture, I give it to the student. So you have to like do one uh, more than one hour lecture. Uh, I, I will try in this semester, I'll try to break it in like 20 minutes, 20 minutes, part one, part two, if I have a time because, you know, the video rendering and stuff, the editing video take some time. Um, I will try to do that, well, not promise, but uh, rest assured that uh, all the lectures will be recorded. Thank you very much. Um, okay, uh, I think we will start. Okay, I'm going to start my lecture now. Uh, this is just uh, some introduction class. I will off my uh, video to save some bandwidth. So hopefully those who uh, uh, for this class, hopefully you can mute your audio. But if you need to ask me anything, feel free to interrupt me during my, my class, okay? But uh, if you want just to listen, just uh, mute your audio because some of the students, they have a background noise because you are now in the house and stuff. So I know like you can hear the sound of Scar, your brother, sisters and stuff. So please, uh, please mute your mic, mic microphone. Uh, where is it? Okay. Okay, can anyone uh, see my screen at the moment? Yes, doctor. Okay. Today is the first lecture uh, of the WA204 operating system. My name is Adar Azali Azuri. I'm a lecturer in the Department of System Computer uh, Department of Computer System and uh, Technology. Basically, it's a network. Uh, this uh, this subject operating system is a compulsory subject. It's a core faculty subject for all the students, regardless what your courses are. Either you are network uh, network software AI multimedia IS or something else okay so what is an operating system i think you all know that operating system for pc they have windows you have a mac and of course you have a linux so maybe you guys familiar with the windows or maybe mac maybe some of you have used linux before uh, there's a unix which is a linux base and others 
operating system for mobile computing is like uh, Android and then uh, iOS. Last time they have Windows Mobile, but already. And last time they have a Windows Mobile, and before that, the first one is a Nokia. We call that Symbian, Symbian or something. So it's already uh, defunct and discontinued. I think Windows Mobile also like discontinued. So now you have Android and iOS. So what is an operating system? Basically, is the boss of a computing system. Is an operating system is the executive manager of a computing system that manages all the hardware and software. So you can imagine this like uh, you know like a uh, uh, light switch. Okay. You have here, um, you have here like a switch. And then you have your lights, and then between all this, you have all the wiring inside the building and stuff. So this is the part of OS. Uh, sorry, uh, this is the part that OS control. Okay, uh, uh, and of course the interface as well. So in order for you to uh, uh, lights. You must have some interface or OS here and all the remaining here. You you can have without the switch. You can also on the light, but you have to know all the, you know, the wiring stuff inside here, which is become too tedious, too difficult, and sometimes it's dangerous as well. So that's why you have OS that control interface between the, is uh, manage all the hardware and software. So in this case, the hardware and lights. So this OS control everything. Here is a OS. So it control every file, device, section of main memory and nanosecond of processing. So basically in computer you have memory, RAM and uh, processor. So uh, there are four managers of an operating system. The first one is a memory manager or what we call that a RAM, random access memory. Uh, random access memory is a you know is a, vol a volatile meaning that if you uh, memory if you power up your system the memory will remain uh, remains there but if you off the system it will be lost and everything so it also checks validity of each request and if request valid it locates a portion of memory that is not in use so basically you have a, you have a big chunk here of memory so this is like a Part of it is taken by OS, and this is all the, the for for the basic me memory management. You have all this to uh, you can use all this to allocate a job. Okay, allocate a job. So some jobs needs more as uh, job one, job two like needs more job three, and so this capacity. Okay, it also deallocates. Let's say job one already like finish. So you will remove job one. OK, move job one. One so that you will become next job will go into these empty slots. You also preserve space in memory occupied by the OS itself. Cannot allow any part of it altered. Excellent. So OS will occupy some of the main memory. OK, some of the main memory uh, spaces. So this one you cannot alter or you cannot like uh, Accidentally altered or intentionally altered. This is like protected, but others you can allocate a job. And then you have a processor manager. Processor manager means the CPU, central processing unit. Is a heart, is the intelligence of the system. It determines how to allocate the central processing unit CPU. Okay, the CPU have their own memory called cache. So this is CPU. This is a cache and this is a main memory RAM. Uh, your RAM. So some smaller CPU have their own catch catch memory, which uh, if like uh, you want to execute certain things that you always uh, you always do, so you a small one you can put in the catch memory, which is more faster. If not, you have uh, CPU have to uh, go to the RAM to you know to see the jobs, which jobs he wants to execute. It keep tracks all the status of each process. A process is an instance of execution of a program. Okay. <coughs> it also monitors whether the CPU is executing a process or waiting read write command to finish the execution. 
So we have a read and write command. I think you know read, uh, meaning that you only can read, you can alter, write, you can alter the file and stuff. It also handles a process transition from one state of execution to others. So uh, this is a process when you have basically in the operating system, basically you have a uh, five states, which is a uh, whole, ready, run, wait, and finish. Okay, a state in the processor manager. So you can imagine this as uh, like a car, uh, racing car, okay? Racing car, before it, uh, okay, this is the car, and this is the starting line. So before it execute, it will be in the whole situation. It doesn't. And then when the flag is up, it's on the ready state. And then when it's like run, you get the car moving to the track. Uh, okay, and then uh, run, wait, wait, run or finish or something like that. And then the car will go to the finish line, which is finish. I think I uh, already wait, uh, run or wait if like, uh, let's say there's like accident or there's a rain in the track, you have, the car has to wait for a while until it finish. And then it will go to the finish line. So they have four states of the processor manager. So it will, it will recreate the processor. Processor also like the memory they have allocated, they have spaces. So uh, when the job is finished, the CPU will re, uh, reclaim the processor or allocate a new jobs or new process to be executed. So you, uh, in a processor manager, you have two job scheduler. One is a processor manager, you have a two scheduler. One is a job and one is a process scheduler. So job is basically, um, job is a big thing. So you have a process one, process two, process three. Oh, sorry, what? sorry. This is job, you have a process one, process two and process three. So uh, job is the big one, process is a small uh, that you can, okay, like job, like uh, you, you, you can say like job, you want to clean the house. Okay, some will clean the bathroom, some will clean the living room, some will clean the uh, main bedroom, some will cleaning the garden and stuff. So this is uh, like, the big job is cleaning the house, so the process is like uh, specific, like cleaning the bathroom, cleaning the room and stuff. So this is the, uh, this is what, uh, basically what job scheduler and process scheduler uh, meanings. So processor like uh, job scheduler is more like high level portion and a process scheduler manage a process within each jobs. So, like a uh, processor scheduler also uh, decides which process gets the CPU and for how long. Maybe uh, to clean the living room, let's like say you give a priority, clean the living room is much more, uh, is given higher priority than a cl uh, cleaning the main bedroom. So you have to start with the uh, cleaning the living room and so on. So each manager must work harmoniously with other managers. Okay, meaning that the system must be in a steady state, stable and stuff. Okay. So basically you have here uh, user command interface. Uh, this is like CMD in your CMD or hyper terminal in your windows. Then you have a processor manager, memory manager, device manager, file manager. Some of the new mod, I mean, now the operating modern operating, this is for basics, but now some of the books they call a network manager, some security manager and so on. Or well, this is this is just a term that used by some of the textbooks or some of the definitions, but all agree that in the system managers, we have processor, memory, device and file manager, okay? So device manager basically uh, monitor each device. You can like right click if you have a window system, you can right click uh, on the my computer. You can see properties, you can see the device. 
you can also like uh, device manager. Uh, what is the command? I can't remember. But you can see the device manager where uh, whether you have your like in, your interface and stuff, all your hardware, all all the components that build up your laptop or PC is in there for your device manager. So you also choose a way to allocate all the terminals, this and that, so on. So you also make the allocation, like USB port, you know, sometimes you use mouse or sometimes you use other things. So when you use that, okay? And then you have your file manager. You have your file, okay? Where file manager where you you can and hide and also uh, make like a read write a group only or general access, okay? Keep tracks of all files like that. Assemblers, compilers, application. PDF uh, you want to open uh, in Adobe Acrobat Reader or X, uh, PDF XOXO or all, all others software that can open a PDF. So it allows also allocate resource when files open. Let's say you open the Microsoft Word file, you allocate the resources. Resources here means RAM and processor. And you also deallocate resources when file is closed. So when you close the file, you click the X button after you save it. So it will deallocate whatever remaining jobs or process in the CPU and the memory. Okay. So the mem main memory management, the memory manager is in charge of uh, main memory, checks the validity of each request for memory space, allocates, reallocates. The, so you have uh, like this one is a main, your main memory. Some of it you allocate to S, which is this one you cannot accidentally alter or un unintentionally alter. So this is the space that you want to allocate uh, jobs. So like uh, this one is job one. This one job two using a bigger memory and job three and stuff. So after like job, uh, let's say job three, uh, job one finish. So you will enter job four, job five. This is in the queue. So job four will go here or something like that. Okay. This is a basic operation, but in details, it's not really like this. Some of it have a fixed memory allocation. Some of it very flexible and stuff. Okay. We will learn about that in the next uh, lecture. So key features of RAM chips, which is like actually a transistor or a chips or a, a logic gates. I think ROM, you know, read only memory, which is a non-volatile. Either you uh, either you on or off the your laptop or PC, the you know the memory will still be there. This where read only memory is a non-volatile. On or off the machine, the memory will remain there. It's, uh, basically, it's a uh, chips, okay? Much more smaller than uh, its capacity, much more smaller than the RAM, and much more slower, smaller and slower than the RAM. So the processor management, the processor manager decides where how to allocate the CPU. Basically, if you want to see how your CPU doing in Windows system, control, alternate, delete see the task manager or something like that. You can see how much your CPU allocates, uh, how much your CPU utilization and stuff. Also keep track of the status of each job process and tracks. Okay. So you have a job, you have a process and you have also a tracks. All this is a different, all these are different terms. Job uh, process is a part of jobs and tracks. Uh, okay. Process jobs is the bigger one. 
process is part of the job, then track is part of the process. This is basically how you want to understand what is job, process, and threats. Okay. Uh, monitor, you also monitor the CPU while handling each process transition like traffic con controller. Okay. Uh, process management, monitor the CPU, whether, okay, okay, the utilization is high or utilization is low. So it's like a traffic con 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 controller. Multiple CPUs, yes, now you have like, now Intel core, like uh, four cores, uh, eight cores or something, meaning that in one individual chips, you have uh, independent, uh, this is a four cores, one independent uh, CPU instead of multiple CPU. It can either be like this or you can have a machine with multiple CPU, okay? Which of course for this, for the uh, heavy duty jobs that need a lot of resources and stuff, you can also have uh, one machine uh, like uh, like cloud computing or something, you have a uh, multiple machines. In this machine, they can have one CPU or multiple CPU as well working together. So this is why I call a multiple CPU. It all mostly uh, mostly the works uh, are all done in a parallel way. So device management again, this is like your device manager. Okay, uh, you can right click your properties, uh, your my computer if you're on, in the Windows. You click the properties and on the top left you have a device manager you can see. If your like device is not uh, installed properly, you can see like a yellow sign on that uh, on, on, on the icon. So basically device management is responsible for connecting with every device that is available on the system. Choosing the most e efficient way to allocate each of these printer spots, this drive and more base device scheduling policies, okay? Uh, yeah, basically, it handles all the device that components that make a system or like printers, your drive, your RAM, and all, all others. Example, just look at your device manager. For Linux, I think in UDEV or something, in UDEV, you have to use a command line. I'm not sure about Apple because I'm not uh, not really an uh, Apple user, Mac, 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 Mac user. But you have every operating system have their device manager, meaning that your hardware manager. Okay. So file management, your file, your PDF file, your .s file, your .c file, everything, whatever file you have. Uh, file file management will manage it. It keep tracks of every file in the system, including data files, program files, utilities, compilers, application, and so on. So it also enforce restriction of file access control. Some of the file you can only read mostly on the Windows. I mean, you have a Windows file, Windows folder, Windows 32. You cannot like modify it. Uh, some of the system file you cannot more 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 modify. And if you are in a network share folder system, you can like restrict uh, that this file can be. Uh, uh, of course, if you are in one machine with multiple users, everyone log on. I mean, uh, each each different users will log on to their own uh, uh, to, to to their own user user system, which they have their, their own file. So you can also enforce restrictions. Like, let, let's say you have everybody. Everyone shares a file uh, like um, the same file system like inventory. You can share files. You can enforce like only certain people can read or you can uh, write. Everyone can read the inventory files, but some of the some of the pers uh, some of the people in charge they can only write if like inventory you want to add some stuff and uh, you want to add some device or stuff. So this is an enforced restriction, read, write, read, or write, or read and write, something like that. So it's a file management. So network management only for OS with networking capability, which only with OS with networking capability, which is all at the moment. I mean, uh, I think last time also, uh, let's just start with the, not sure when uh, which OS. They can. I mean, uh, now OS, all OS can handle the networking capability. 
Okay, provides convenient way for authorized users to share resources. This manager must take overall responsibility for every aspect of the network connectivity, including the requirements of available devices such as well as files, memory space, CPU capacity, transmission connection, and types of encryption, or if necessary. Meaning that if you share a folder or something, you can put you can put uh, you know um, you can put a password in order for you uh, in order for people to access. You don't want unauthorized access. You can put a password to certain folders. Or whenever someone wants to, if you have in a network sharing, network sharing office, you can put a password if anyone tries to open the files in your machine. So this is some network management. One another one is like a security management, which is all uh, new. So basically, it handles the security, the virus and stuff, antivirus, trojan and others. Okay. So a user interface, last time, if you're familiar with Windows, uh, you have uh, CMD. Uh, uh, in Linux, you have a CLI, command line interface. Uh, and you have a Windows, you have a high, uh, in, in Apple, they have a hyper terminal. So mostly in an old fashioned way, you have a command line interface if you want to access whatever file, okay? You want to create a directory, you can use a command line like in Windows CD, and then you, you CD and then you create uh, the folder names. But now, of course, easier you have a graphical user interface. Everything you just click, click, and that click, uh, right, tick, uh, I mean, click, uh, tick, or whatever you want. So it's a graphical user interface, which is easier. Command line interface is uh, much more hardcore users, okay? So we go for the end evolution of computing hardware. So this is basically the OS development. Uh, operating system development, not, not a com computer, okay? It's the OS development. The first generation computers, 1944 and 1955, not much using, uh, they don't really use uh, OS. The second generation computers, and a third generation computer from mid 1960s and 70s, 80s, 90s until now it's like more mostly is a more processor power, more hardware, hardware memory, uh, more parallel way of uh, doing programs and stuff. Okay. Now, in order for the program to be good, you must have both. You must have, must have both capabilities of the computer hardware and of course the software. So uh, in, in, in order any programs to be good, both the hardware and both the software or the programmers coding side must be you know, uh, compatible. Last time it was only a uh, hardware. I mean, uh, the software engineer just do what, whatever software they want to create and let for the performance they let uh, hardware guys uh, deliver or let all other problems of performance let the let the hardware guys uh, hand handle that but now no you must have both uh, hardware and software engineers in the in, in the coding style like parallel way to do the uh, to make a program better and faster Okay, this is a, this is a OS development. OS is a software. Software control all the hardware of the machine. So the first computers is basically uh, this is a debate, but in history, mostly in majority Greece, they had Augusta Ada Byron, a British girls, I guess, from aristocrat uh, family. The world first computer programmer played a key role in formulating a notion of programming the analytical engine. And you know, there's a joke, uh, joke. there's a joke uh, going around why the computer programming is so difficult because it's created by the women. But this is not like a sexist way, this like to, you know, to, uh, yeah, because, yeah, com computer programming for those who don't interest, uh, do, those who are not interested in the computer, they feel uh, very difficult. So some say that because it's created by the woman, it's so complicated. And it's not a sexist or a sexist joke, whatever. Just, just a jokes like uh, 
playing around on the in, in internet. Okay. I don't think even if the male created the programming language, it still be difficult. It doesn't matter. But of, of course, these are jokes, right? Uh, so the first computers in 1991, the London Science Museum difference engine using Babbage, Babbage plants. This is like not the. Um, it's not the first computer, just uh, this one. It's not the first computer, it's like a couple of uh, improvement made from the first one, which is um, from Augusta Adebaran or Analytical Engine. So you have a Bobbage plant, as shown in this wood cut. It works perfectly. This is, uh, okay, this is uh, for the, can only solve a mathematical equation and stuff. It's very limited, uh, very limited uh, processing power. So the first computer also used the uh, you know vacuum tube technology, and they, they don't really need a uh, operating system. Mostly is a hardware base. Okay, mostly is a hardware base. So the first, and then uh, so uh, there's uh, also improvement of the that Bobbage and uh, and other computers, uh, Hellerix and the automated sensor bureau of America invented an electronic punching device. So founded by tabletting machine company, which become IBM. IBM. Most of the computer standards that we use, uh, take example for your keyboards, use the I, 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 IBM standard. So Larry's punch card tilting machines are the predecessor of the today's business machine. Okay, so this uh, the first like the first uh, commercial one, the first like ready to use commercial. It's not really a commercial, like mostly on the government. Uh, government officers or big companies, uh, several companies that want to solve uh, certain problems. They use uh, this one, the Hollerys and Automated Sensor, I mean, uh, sorry, uh, the el el electronic punching device. Use a card, make a hole out of it, like a punch card, and then you process the jobs. So they also any created by Dr. John and Mochley, okay, uh, from Presper Eckert for use the war, but it must not complete the time. It was mainly used to solve math problems. So all this to solve the math problems. Now you have a you know, calculator which is the size of your palm, or maybe even smaller to solve some complex mathematical, or use MATLAB or other software. So this is this is like the old calculator last time to solve like you know two plus three or something two times three which is more complex, right? So the computer program as well as data is stored in the computer's memory. When you call it computer's memory is a RAM. Okay, and the computer program as well data is stored in the computer's memory. So this is the first generation, uh, 1950s, a vacuum tube system. The first generation of computers use vacuum tubes. Vacuum tubes fail frequently to fall. First generation did not work most of the time. So this is like a prototype. It is an IBM. I think they, they patented it. They, they, they patented it. I think I have, uh, if you find like uh, IBM patent uh, vacuum tube system, you can find in the Google, Google Scholar. Doesn't really work. I mean, it works, but not work most of the time. So it's not really a commercial success. But this is the start. So uh, you can actually deliver the first Univac to the US Council Bureau in 1951. Univac gained fame when it predicted Eisenhower as a winner of the 1950 US presidential election. Okay. Not sure whether you have uh, learned about it. I mean, uh, I think you know all the statistics and stuff. Of course, uh, uh, now like more complex data. Now like you use data analytics from uh, social media or from others, uh, other point of uh, you, where you can collect the data. We call it data analytics. 
to predict the election and stuff. But this Univac, uh, Univac uh, predicted Eisenhower as the winner of 1952 US presidential election using a statistic solved by these big machines. Okay, solved by these big machines. Use that's I mean, it's, I mean, all this whether all this to to determine whether Eisenhower win or not the e election based maybe a limited data they have that time and they can predict quite accurately okay so features of univac you have easier to use than any act fewer vacuum tubes more level vacuum tubes much prone to the failure a stored program general purpose and use machine language so machine language, you, I, I think you will learn in the embedded system how the processor language works, okay? Uh, IBM 701. This is the machine, this is the model of the uh, first generation computer. I mean, the, the modern after the vacuum tubes. You know, for IBM 650. Because of this uh, machine, I think that's how IBM become that's how IBM really becomes successful uh, international business or a very successful company because of these two two products. And then you have a second generation use transistor, the transistor. So it developed for the business cost effective systems. Uh, so it's also a very expensive one. OK. Yes, is that? So you're muted. Is it the whole time or something? No one uh, yes, yes, huh? during during yes, during this second generation like. only. Ah oh, okay, okay. I thought the whole time. Something strange. What happened? So? Why they they muted me? Okay, okay, never mind. Uh, okay. Uh, if you cannot, that's that's okay. Meaning that you, uh, you concentrate on my lecture, which is good. <laughs> that's that's okay. All right. Okay. Uh, this is held a second generation of computers, which is this uh, uh trend transistors is the heart of the even uh the modern computers. Where you have a logics and everything, gate logics and everything is based on the transistors. Okay. Uh, so everything like process, job scheduling, improve productivity because program with similar requirements can be grouped together for processing. So this is where the you know the Fortran programs, the fault the fault for the Fortran or F language, <laughs> the F language. Or sometimes you use the F F F F sharp, okay? So this is where uh, the first uh, like pro programming language ever made. I mean, the first programming. I can say that the commercial or the mass use uh, pro pro programming language of 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 Fortran, okay? Um, So the second generation uh, still still use punch card of a batch jobs. We call that one by one. You have to wait one jobs to finish before you can execute the others. Okay, punch cards. Use printers, tape storage, and disk storage. Use high level programming language like Cobol and Fol 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 Cobol and Fortran. Okay. We have IBM 1401. And this is a second generation as well, electronic recording machine accounting or ERMA. Then you have uh, ASCII, American Standard Code for Information Interchange or ASCII code. 
where what is the binary number for like character A, B, C, they have an ASCII code for for that, okay? And then you have IBM System 3.0, line of compatible computer interactions to enable to be used for both business and science. So this is like the really a commercial one for business and science. Last time it was very expensive, only used like a big company or government bureau. But now it also offers to like a small businesses like IBM System 3.0. You can, of course, you can uh, always, uh, you can like, uh, so uh, uh, you can always see on the YouTube, the tube machine, uh, tube vac vacuum tube computers and others like uh, 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 punch cut computers or something like that you can see on the YouTube in the black and white color. So uh, the third generation com computer this is like the uh, what is the modern is the base for the modern PCs or machine use a time okay last time it used a batch last time it used a batch uh, batch jobs or we call it a serial if you want so like you have a job one job two job three so you have to wait until job one finish, then you can execute a job two and job three and so on, which is this is a serial of batch jobs based on the batch system. Now you, they use a time sharing, okay? They use a time sharing, meaning that job one, job two uh, can like simultaneously uh, execute or something, okay? Or like job one specific time allocated, if not finished, most go to the job two. Access remotely by terminal, so this is the beginning of the network system, okay? You can access remotely, but use integrated circuits, small, medium to large scale integration resulting in lower cost, okay? So uh, the multi program scale is constrained by the physical capacity of, I mean, they use like time sharing, they use a uh, multi -pro programming they want to execute uh, more jobs at one time so for solution they use uh, the develop which to the advantage of the fact that cpu can process only one instruction at a time so with virtual memory the entire program will not reset the memory okay the virtual memory the entire program because from cpu they want to go like okay this is C this is a cpu this is the main memory Every time CPU want to travel to the RAM, it will take some time. Uh, so they have like this a uh, virtual memory which is nearer to the CPU and much more faster. Like jobs that are small jobs or jobs that you always do, uh, you can put in a virtual memory. Okay. Uh, so you integrated circuit, a trend transistor re resulting in lower cost. So the third generation as well, uh, you have uh, more advancement. Uh, this is microcomputer, this is a, it's a US company. PDP is like, uh, I'm not sure, I forgot already what's the acronym for that. Uh, this is mini computer, many different programming language, IBM unbundled in systems. It's, it is not a PC, but it's a mini computers. But the, at that time, mini computers is compared to the current times, really a giant computer, still a giant computer. Uh, so at that time in 1970s, uh, like wide area networks uh, when developed, no, when is like the uh, basic for internet. ARPANET implement internet protocols, TCP IP, local area networks, LAN also developed, and mainframes, mini computers, open architecture also developed on, at that time. So, advancement, so uh, milestone, the fourth generation computer, they also employ a very large scale integration of VLSI. So uh, all these uh, com electronic components, electronic components, you can scale it very small into in, into the circuit board. 
develop Intel 4004 first microprocessor. I think speed is uh, is couple of kilobyte. Not 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 even uh, reach a me 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 megabyte. Okay, the clock uh, the clock speed. So this uh, Apple computer also for found, founded 1970 and uh, 1980 the first PC. I went to the personal computer. I went computers are clones, uh, computers or clones introduced. Okay. Okay. This is how the first PC looks in 1981. So Intel provided a Microsoft and Microsoft already provided operating systems. Uh, so this is the basis uh, model that uh, used by uh, our modern uh, system at moment i think some of it uh, there's like uh, i think ebay uh, you can find this item in ebay some of it working some of it doesn't uh, doesn't really works uh, but they sell in a very uh, ex i mean um, very expensive one i'm not sure whether you want to buy or not okay but if you have a collect, uh, you want to have a collectible item of the fourth generation PC or the modern that basis of our modern PCs, you can have you you, you can have a look. So uh, Apple computer and IBM, uh, okay, uh, you have uh, Apple computer use a Motorola and call a Macintosh or Mac, and Intel you call a PC. So this, the fourth generation, is uh, the first PC created for the, you know, for the normal user, for the single user. So you have uh, like, uh, operate, this is where the base of the operating system as well. If you can see for uh, Microsoft version provider op operating system. Apple computer Macintosh first, first commercial personal computer to offer a user interface. So before this, uh, IBM computer you use a command line. Okay, uh, command line. If you see, if you um, command line interface, everything they don't have mouse or whatsoever. So Macintosh was the first commercial personal computer you offer a user interface, a nice one. And then you have a IBM, uh, this is Apple computer, and then you have a IBM that use Windows, Microsoft Windows 98. The first one, I think the first DUI for the Microsoft is Windows 95, which doesn't have a, very difficult to connect to internet, by the way. By 98, if you use, if you, I don't think you have, I don't think you have uh, ever experienced using a dial up the alarm internet by 98 windows 98 pro provide that function dial up modem so we are still in the fourth generation the fifth generation they use ai i'm not sure but this is all a definition by the expert it can be like extension of the fourth generation or so on but using uh, the use of ai for everything now is the standard okay use of ai AI has been slow in coming. I mean, um, it's not AI has been slow in coming. Last time, yes, it's still slow, but now it's like rapidly. Everyone, every system use AI, mostly on the internet. Like Google use AI, Facebook and stuff. That's why you know. That's why you they they can know what you want to, what uh, your what you want to search or what is your interest. They can suggest to you. So this use all all use AI. Uh, fifth generation also uh, technologically we are still in the fourth generation in which engineers are pushing to see how many transistors they can pack on on the chip. So now they have uh, you know a lot of transistors, but it will come to an end. So this effort uh, this effort alone will bring some of the trappings of AI. So the fifth generation computer is not, I mean, you have a quantum compute, quantum computing, super computer, everything. Not really sure it can be called a fifth generation, but as the, you know, uh, as the majority of computer experts agree that 
uh, fifth generation computer use mostly will use AI. So there are four categories based on response times and how data is entered in there, types of operating system. So you have a batch system last time, a vacuum tubes and stuff, a serial jobs, interactive system, which is a extension of a serial, but you can like uh, multiple pro, multiple jobs, but limited, okay, interactive system. And you have a real time system, which is very fast. And you have a hybrid system, which is the modern use of both both modern PC now still use the serial and I mean still use a batch and uh, batch interactive and real time. So hybrid is a combination of all three, or some element uh, or some uh, two or three elements of these types of operating system. So mostly now operating system is the hybrid systems. So this is the hardware configuration. You have, okay, this a normal PC setup, I think, um, a video interface, video screen, and then you have uh, ALU registers. So this CPU, again, you have ALU, which uh, solve the, which uh, doing all the logics, uh, mathematical registers, internal control for IO and bus control. Bus control connected to the main memory disk controller, serial interface, parallel interface. And of course, you have a keyboard interface, so on. So this is the modern uh, computer setup. Now, they, you don't use, you use a wireless or something like that, okay? So machine hardware, a computer hardware is the physical machine and electronics components, main memory where data interaction must be recited to be processed, input-output device, peripheral units such as printers, disk drive, CD drive, thumb drive. So this is basically input-output device as a hardware, and a main memory where you uh, all the instruction to control the hardware must be recited in the main memory. And then you have a central processing unit, the brain of a computer controls the operation of the entire computer system. Consists of circuit of chips to control chips, meaning that a lot of transistors, okay? To, to control the interpretation and addition of the instruction. So the features of current OS are, are based on users' need, support for multimedia applications, uh, Internet and web access, client server computing, and so on. So many, so many programs now. If your PC day is a powerful, you can run a programs. You can install a lot of things on your PC, especially those for gamers. They use a really um, like a power, powerful speed, and you must have. Now they have a GPU graphical pro process unit for basically on image. Some jobs now are divided between the CPU and of, and of course the GPU for the modern one. So the system architecture for the current OS has been improved in a way of components are the program and organized. It also uses object oriented design reorganization of a kernel. Kernel is the core of operating system that handles everything, okay? Kernel, core of operating system, heart, core or heart of operating system that control everything in the OS. The kernel itself can be said that can control the machine as well. So the kernel is the part of the OS, a heart of it that resides in memory all the times, okay? There is a specific special allocation of the OS. So this is the early OS design, entire OS in main memory and available memory for application. You can see that OS take a lot of allocation, I mean a lot of space in the RAM. So this is the RAM. So entire OS in a main memory take a lot of allocation in OS. Available memory for applications, so they just 
like say if you have an eight megabyte RAM, eight megabyte last time it's an eight megabyte, you know, thirty two megabyte RAM, sixteen almost sixteen half of it is occupied by the OS. Yeah, if you install a uh, nine Windows ninety eight, almost half of it occupied by the occupied the RAM, so you have a very little space to. Uh, execute or uh, very little space to allocate your jobs or applications. Okay, this is the early OS, and the kernel also in the early OS was very large and included all functions such as memory allocation, process scheduling, device allocation. So, if you want to add a new components or modifying existing components, it will take a lot of time and it's a time consuming. It's a tedious process. Okay. But the benefit of it, you can learn a lot of it. I mean, it's not automated. Everything you have to like run a command line. A very, you must be very, um, you must be very knowledgeable in hardware and of uh, software in the early OS. Not many people, not many is not really user interf user interface friendly. And now you have a uh, current OS. So object oriented OS, the current one, you have OS kernel in main memory. Kernel is limited to few essential functions, like very important. Kernel is still a core or heart of the OS, but they have uh, um, functions like process scheduling, process and memory, process scheduling, and memory allocation. So this is a very important. This is a pro, uh, in, in important jobs. This is the kernel jobs for the current OS uh, for the yeah, object oriented OS or the current OS. How this function and memory allocation model if if memory uh, memory allocation model if needed and available memory for applications. So OS networking functions if needed, OS file manager if needed, and OS device manager if needed. So this is a very flexible in a way, flexible. So it does not take a lot of, uh, it doesn't take a lot of uh, space for the current OS in the RAM memory. So you have a lot of slots to run your applications, okay? So it's also uh, easier to add new components or modify existing components, okay? It works well in the distribution systems. So let's say if you don't have device manager, of course you need file manager, of course you need. And so you take a little bit of the allocation module if if needed. If uh, you don't use that anymore, it will deallocate. Okay, the memory will deallocate, and available memory application will be increased. So you can done the job faster, uh, much more. Uh, uh, much more optimum in your any of your application, uh, any of your running application. So another important is the intro introduction of threads. Uh, threads is uh, you know a smaller smallest unit uh, part of thread. Uh, thread is okay. Uh, you have a job here, and you have a process one, process two, and process three. And process, you can classify it into thread one, thread two, thread three, and so on. Uh, thread one, thread two, and so on. So thread is just like the smallest. Uh, smallest units between the job process and the threads. A process has two characteristics. It requires, okay? Process has two characteristics. It requires space in main memory where it resides during the execution. From time to time, it requires other resources or data files, okay? It requires space in memory. So process must have a space in main memory resides during the execution. So it's very important. You have uh, you allocate a process uh, process one in any of the uh, any uh, any available slot any available slot in the main memory. From time to time requires other resources or like data files. 
It passes through several states, running, waiting, ready. As, as I said, there's a five states, which is a uh, whole, uh, ready, run, wait, and finish. From its initial arrival to its completion, from uh, whole to finish. Okay. In modern OS as well, processes are split between memory and secondary storage during the execution. In conventional process, known as heavyweight process, this incurs high overhead because for each swap, all process <coughs> before must be saved to preserve the process integrity. So process are swapped between memory and secondary storage during execution. So you have a here a CPU, then you have your uh, RAM, and you have also here a secondary storage. Secondary storage, which can only access by RAM. CPU cannot straightway jump to secondary storage. CPU will always interact with RAM, RAM with the secondary storage during exec execution. Okay, so this uh, again, why this is uh, why is it designed like this to make everything in the PC is the speed. The most important thing is the speed. Second, maybe the uh, speed, but sometimes speed you take a lot of resources which can hit. You can hit the machine, or you take a lot of uh, you 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 utilize more of the CPU, uh, CPU or memory uh, space. So this is a this is a trade off. More speed meaning that higher utilization, but that's, that, that's why uh, from time to time, uh, the modern PC, they try to increase the CPU speed, increase the RAM, uh, increase the RAM mem memory and stuff, because why they want to make it faster, but this all comes to like, PC can become, uh, uh, PC can become like uh, heated easily and stuff, all right? So again, a thread, as I mentioned before, is a small unit smaller than a process can be scheduled and executed. The heavy process which own resources becomes a passive element. And the thread becomes the element that use the CPU and is scheduled for the execution. Swapping a thread is less time consuming than swapping a process because there is a less info to be saved. So again, the heavy process which own resources become a passive element. Uh, so you have you have a big process, a chunks of big process. You can uh, you can uh, break it into uh, several threads. The thread becomes the element so that you CPU and schedule for the exec, exec, execution. So instead of C, instead of CPU um, execute the process, CPU will execute the thread thread first. Okay. And swapping a track is less time consuming than swapping a process. So because of the smaller size of the track, smaller size of the track, uh, use a less info, and of course your exec your execution of a track is much more faster than execution of a process because of the smaller size and easier to process. Okay, so this is a track CPU. Uh, this is a process. And this, the largest one is a job, okay? But now, if you go, if you go to the Intel, if you go to like, what is the latest Intel processor, they will tell you how many cores they have and how many threads they can handle at one time, okay? So thread is a new things because a smaller thread, you can execute a thread which is a much more faster components than a process because of the smaller size and uh, less CPU utilization. And of course, you have a multi-processing where two or more CPU share the same main memory. Okay, you have like, uh, this is the RAM 1, RAM 2, RAM 3, okay? All shares the 
sorry, so, yeah, this, so it's this C, uh, CPU one, CPU one, CPU two, and CPU three, and all share the main memory or RAM. With two or more CPU share the same memory, most I only and the same control program routines. So uh, the service the same job stream and execute the same processing programs concurrently. So you can do a multiple program, uh, a parallel programming or parallel process, which is can execute, of course, faster. As I mentioned before, the goal is to make your PC or your machine execute faster for any applications or programs. But now, uh, but both the hardware and software must be compatible. As I mentioned before, last time, yes, is it mute again? No, okay. I know it's a one hour, but we have a, uh, we have only four slides to go, so we'll finish. A normal class uh, after one hour, I will take a break, like five to ten minutes, and then we can continue. But since we only have uh, five more slides, so we will continue. This is an in introduction class, so it's not really heavy. Just uh, you know, just a brief uh, overview of everything in the OS. Okay, multiprocessing. You have a, a multiple CPU. You can have a CPU or you can have a one chip. They have a, a single independent CPU. Okay, like Intel four core, Intel eight cores, and something like that. And you have a symmetric multiprocessing allows several CPUs to process multiple jobs at the same time. The CPUs are independent of each other. Each CPU has access to the OS. They share memory and secondary storage device. So you have a symmetric multiprocessing, which is much more faster. Okay, then the multiprocessing -pro itself. Okay, some of the processor, they in dependent on each other, but for the symmetric multiprocessing, each CPU is uh, independent of each other. Okay, uh, you can put other jobs that is not related to other CPU as well, so that that CPU can run that jobs or process or threads. So this is a typical setup of uh, multiple processors. Uh, if there are five, you can run up to five process simultaneously. Okay, of course, uh, main memory also must be your RAM also must be very big to uh, to be compatible or able to withstand the, all the CPU, all the C, all the CPU that installed in that machine. So, in asymmetric multiprocessing, some OS functions are assigned to subordinate processor, which takes the instruction from the main CPU. Some OS functions are assigned to subordinate processors. Each in system with one processor, all these scheduling and program calculations are managed by the CPU. If a second CPU is added and assigned to responding for this scheduling, then a pull request from the main CPU, this processor is its own algorithm to handle requests. That's it. So meaning that in asymmetric process, you have a main CPU, which is the top of the hierarchy. And of course you have a secondary CPU, CPU or something. So if a second is added and signed to the for this scheduling, then upon request from the main CPU, main CPU can request the secondary CPU uh, to execute its own algorithm to handle request for this access or something like that. This is asymmetric multiprocessing. For the symmetric multiprocessing, each CPU is independent of each other. Okay. Asymmetric, you have a main CPU and you have a secondary or third CPU. And of course, you have a network manager, those who you handle the print, printer sharing, file sharing, folder sharing, everything you want to share, photos, you want to share files, whatever, whatever. Okay, database. And cloud computing. So cloud computing, meaning that you have a multiple machine that share resources use, doing the uh, that share resources and doing the jobs that, of course, you make much more faster. Is uh, like um, it's one of the key technologies of uh, 
uh, moment. If you have a cloud company, let's say you want to host, you want to have a company like servers and stuff, database, you can host it on a cloud computing instead of have a physical location, one server room, which is uh, is expensive. You have to handle the electricity, you have to handle the heating, everything, wiring and stuff. Other than having that, you can of course outsource it to the, you can host it on the cloud computing, which is much more easier, right? So how uh, it changes the role of OS, it allows us to accommodate remote access system resources, provide increased security. Of course, if you have, let's say you have a PC and you don't have, uh, you don't have uh, enough uh, uh, fund to buy a Microsoft Office and stuff, of course you have an internet, you have a browser Chrome, which is free, you can use a uh, Google Office or something like that, okay? So this is a, you can run OS, you can run some applications in the, uh, you can run, uh, run some applications in the cloud computing, okay? Right, that's it for today. Uh, thank you very much. So, uh, any questions? Saya idal, yang beran ni. Minggu ni tak ada tak ada lab lagi eh? Ah, minggu ni tak ada lab lagi. Next week baru start kan? Ah, next week baru start. Okay. So lab handle by each lecturer ah uh, same time I guess <laughs> since it's online eh. So since it's online same time senang. If not last time group one have a different day different time or something like that. Okay. Tapi macam I I handle dua group je macam ni eh? Boleh kot sekali sebab Sekali kan eh? Tujuh lapan eh? Tujuh lapan eh? Sebab dia online kan? Okay. Is there a session to go through the course? Uh, is there a session to go through the course performer? Book for us for reference. Okay, uh, yes there is a book. Uh, because this is the first time I hand, uh, I become a head ketua penyelaras. So, I think Puan Fazida already uh, upload in the system, but never mind. I will check in the spectrum. Everything I will post in the spectrum, okay? No, there's not a WhatsApp group yet. Um, since like, uh, I don't know, how, how many students? I haven't have the figure from the faculty yet. There's no WhatsApp group, but anything, anything we do in the spectrum, I will discuss with uh, Puan Fazida whether um, uh, it can be a WhatsApp group or maybe a Telegram. WhatsApp have a certain limitation on numbers, maybe Telegram groups. Okay. Anything else? So if uh, if uh, there are no questions, um, so I ended the class today. So hopefully we can uh, meet face to face. All right, uh, maybe next semester or something. Uh, hopefully the COVID-19 uh, situation will become better. All right, thank you very much to everyone. Thank you, Doctor.